Nothing in all the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Ray Kroc, inventor of the French fry. We are going to make this even more stupider. Assalamu alaikum, blood. But what we have is the Juicy Jizzer colostomy bag squeezer and fresh cold pressed juice IoT device, IoT shorthand, of course, for Internet of Things that shouldn't be on the internet. This thing is so beautifully overbuilt and under-engineered that we just have to have a second kick at the cat in order to see why anyone would want to replace the first part of their gastrointestinal tract with a robotic jizzer. 6,000 years of God's will and evolution have given us the most amazing machine to take solid fruit and turn it into a pulp extract all the nutrients and yet and yet someone thought that, <laughs> that they could improve upon that and charge a premium for it there's a sucker born every minute however we are left with this beautiful device so we're gonna use it now I made some mistakes the first time around this is the Bluetooth board and what this does is it takes pictures of the QR code and possibly if it was hacked, your thumbprint or your house or, you know, turn it into a nanny cam and then puts it on the internet for all and sundry to see, or at least Juicero. Now this has a USB dongle and as we can see, so I stuck the dongle end in the female port of my confuser, couldn't get her to chooch on account of not having the drivers. Now, if somebody else wants to try and hack this so that we don't need the QR code, the QR code ostensibly, the guys who make this say that it's to protect people so that they don't use out of date packs. On the sideline of that is if you don't have the right QR code, if you don't have the right ones and zeros on that pack, say you bought it from somewhere other than Juicero, you also can't squeeze the pack. So a digital rights management system for a bag of fruit. So we are hacking this machine so that we can press whatever the fuck we want. I thought I was wrong. Then I was right. Turns out I was mistaken. These are not, tra well, these are a type of transformer, but these are chokes to reduce the noise going back, the electrical noise going back into the grid. And I don't know if this is actually 330 volts DC or if that, because these capacitors are only rated for 250 and there's only two diodes there so i don't think it's a voltage doubler circuit it could be but there's no capacitors because these are on the filter side and this is a coupling a decoupling capacitor or a filter capacitor for the mean well power supply so a little bit of a question how they're doing this here definitely two diodes but it looks like it's just half wave rectification could be wrong, wouldn't be the first time, certainly won't be the last. The astute amongst us have duly noted that I took the cover off to reveal a beautiful piece of machining. Complete overkill, overbuilt, and I say under-engineered because when you overbuild something, it's necessarily under-engineered. So in the comments, you'll see all kinds of stuff about how beautiful it is, how how well engineered, how over engineered it is. It's actually really poorly engineered because they didn't have a money constraint. There was no constraint as to no beautiful constraints to come up with a very smart and, and razor sharp solution to squeezing a colostomy bag. Instead, they went with brute force, which turns out to be beautiful, but it is not good engineering. It is overbuilding. Now, speaking of overbuilding, this had a beautiful switch on it. And I hadn't taken this apart in the previous video. I thought it was some sort of super expensive rolled up solution. No, just a crappy surface mount tactile switch. But it's such a beautiful sound. What's going on? Look at this. Look at this. Laser, no, not laser cut. Uh, water jet cut spring a spring solution and this goes and that's what makes the doingy doing beautiful 
look at the cost of her waft for that just for that beautiful feel on the switch i also made a tribological error in that this tapered roller bearing actually can support a little bit less force than axial force than this uh, flat bearing here this thrust bearing in here interesting feature is that this is only even though this basal platen is huge this press platen it just has one little tiny fastener and uh, a square socket that's keeping it from torquing over and we can see here it's torquing over so as far as an industrial press this is not going to last long because you just have this tiny little gland end that's actually doing the, the pushing on the cushion. Also, so this will tweak over just in this uh, aluminium. Also, rookie mistake here. Bearings are not rollers. So, bearings are not made for point load. And you see them used, bearings used as guides in small force things. But... Any time you have high force, a high force rolling element, it needs to be in a roller. It's not made for point load. It, it has to be in a roller. This is a, a rookie mistake on their part. And we can see these don't actually do anything other than prevent this from tweaking over. Um, as far as guides to keep this straight and on the level, it really doesn't do shit. So for an industrial press, this, you know, we're going to have to baby this. Uh, how much force do you get out of it? Well, we'd have to calculate uh, through all this mechanism and through the, the helical wedge that we have here on this Acme thread. The critical thing is we need to know the torque output of the motor. I don't know the torque output of the motor, but according to the specifications on this, it's got a force of two Teslas. So there you have it. On the subject of low-hanging fruit, we need to increase the chooch factor. This clearly needs more flare. So we're going to use the Hitachi Magic Wand bulbous rubber tip. What for rattling your fillings from downstairs. We're going to stick her on there. If we could get this fucking glue out. How does glue not stick to the... Apparently it does stick to the inside of the bottle. For dork street cred, nothing finer than the triple nickel timer chip. I made these myself. Now the fun part. We get to hack this in order to take advantage of the healthful benefits of uh, the 2,000 year old art of Chinese yellow soup. As evidenced by such internet sensations as two girls, one cup. This fecal microbiotal transplant scenario is really coming to the fore. Is there any other example a better example of conspicuous consumption than having a cordless colostomy bag squeezer if you can't buy it you gotta make it so we need to control this motorb and the way we're gonna do that well we're gonna power it with a battery a lithium a, a tool cell battery but we need an h bridge and an H bridge is a motor control that allows you to reverse. So you can go forward and reverse and stop. We're not too worried about stop. So we'll do a little workaround so that we just need to do forward and reverse. Now we'll need a couple switches and some relays. If in, well, let's go into the lab and I'll show you. Welcome back to the way sewing room. What we need is an H bridge. Essentially, here's the motorb in the middle. And we need four switches. So if we close this switch, we close this switch, motor chooches thusly. Now we open those back up, motor doesn't move. We close this switch, we close this switch, chooches in reverse. So that is an H bridge. We're gonna do that, we could do that with electronicals and all sorts of stuff. No, we are going to do that instead with a simple set of relays very simply put a relay is a switch that instead of being actuated manually the flick of a finger it's actuated with an electromagnet that is a wire wrapped around an iron core here we have a motor start relay it's got big beefy contacts and an electromagnet 
when you put a little bit of voltage and a little bit of current on the magnet, it can switch a lot of voltage and a lot of current. So a relay is just an electromechanical switch that allows you to use a tiny bit of voltage and a tiny bit of current to control big beefy things. In my schematic here I drew with normally open contacts on the switch but here we have a typical automotive relay. Here's the symbol for solenoid, that's the solenoid, and there's two contacts there. There's the wiper, the 30, and then there's a normally open and a normally closed. That means when there's no power on, the normally closed is closed and the normally open is open. And then when the power goes on the solenoid, they switch. They switch around. So this very common automotive relay in just about everything that moves you're gonna find one of these so they're cheap ubiquitous and very robust we're gonna use those and we're gonna get a little creative with it because we want this to forward and reverse what we can do because we have normally open and normally closed contacts is we only need one switch to power these solenoids so if we power one side solenoid we get the motor to turn one way because we're using the normally open and normally closed and then if we power the other solenoid and de-energize this solenoid the motor turns the opposite direction because these have normally open and normally closed contacts we can get away with doing that here's the stand-in for the motor these two little light emitting diodes. They only light up when the pixies chooch one way or t'other. Looks complicated. It ain't that bad. Two relays, one switch. Whatever you do, don't Google it. It's disgusting. So there we go. We got it on this direction and the motor's turning the orange way. Now we switch the switch and now it's turning forward and reverse and forward pretty close huh huh all right let's test her out Oops. That works. I'm thinking maybe I should have put a fuse in. Mark II. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Get some sort of schmoo in there, I guess, from the drilling. Perfect. It works. Now we can do some wire management, aka hide your mess under the bed so that you can go and watch cartoons. Now we got the under cab of a pick em up truck after it's been to the uh, hitch installers. I learned from the best here. Corn deck. Right on. Now we're going to see, I got a juice pack, we're going to see if we've properly circumvented the digital rights management on the fruit. <laughs> Uh, more than likely, I'm, I'm in contravention of the terms of service when I bought this thing, so expect Evil Omnicorp uh, Juice Jizzer Wizard to nuke me into the next century. However, I do it all for you. I have a juice back here, and it's just past due, so it would not chooch in a regular machine. However, best before does not mean bad after. I'm going to do something with that. Oh, sick! Oh, give that prostate a shake.
stuff's expensive. We're having a breakthrough in technology here because we're slow cold pressing. We're actually getting more juice and more nutrients. <laughs> All right. Well, here's jizz in your eye. That's uh, not bad. It's not, it's not great. It kind of appeals to that Judeo-Christian, you know, if it, if it doesn't hurt, if it's not, dis, if it's not, if you're not suffering, it's not doing anything, you know, kind of nasty. But drinkable, not like that other, the, the root renewal sex juice. That stuff was disgusting. We've successfully completed the Kessel Run. Now, I'm going to try making our own cold pressed juice. Uh, there seemed to be a filter element in the huh, the huh. Uh, how are we doing on huh? huh? We're gonna have pear and kiwi, delicious, healthful pear kiwi juice. To put your mind at ease, my safety squints are fully engaged. We appear to have some leakage. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh. Ho, 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 ho. There we go. Oh yeah, cold pressed juice at its finest. Oh, did he see? It's like eating a fruit. She's built like an iron lung, an abomination mechanical. Travel size for to better bring on holidays with Darth Vader. Oh, if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. I prefer my rum lightly covered anyway. Fresh squeezed rum. Is there anything more healthful? I feel better already. Happier even. The thing is you, you got to pick the glass shards out of your teeth. But minor price to pay. This is not the last time we see this thing. Uh, I got some ideas for the old Jezeru Mark II. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in advice. A tool and die maker got back to me on this ABS. Beautiful ABS and polycarbonate. Specifically the revision numbers. They prepared revisions A through I, but in the end, Preparation H felt the best on the whole. For those of us who enjoy stickers, I give some of these away down below me, every video, or you can trust your luck or trust your legal tender. I know throwing the wallet at the screen doesn't work, but in this case, if you go over to Etsy, you get four stickers for six bucks. If you can't afford that, you don't want whatever, put your name in the doobly-doo, I might just send you some. Just for tits and pickles, we got the 555 five timer chip, cool as frig. Also, <laughs> keep those of us with dirty, sticky dick beaters out of your drawers. A toolbox security sticker. Thank you for sharing the live in the shop and keeping the wheels on this thing turning. I appreciate it.